Right. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to call to order the special meeting of the Sunderland School Committee on March 12th, 2024 at 546 p.m. We have one agenda item before the regular school committee starts at six o'clock. Our new business is to adjust the FY25 budget due to the transportation bid. Would we like to give a quick explanation for the public record? Sure. The uh, transportation bid came in after the last school committee meeting. Uh, so we've adjusted the number to account for the significant increase in transportation costs. Um, so that'll bring the budget as we're presenting tonight from 4.19% over FY24 to 5.05. Um, and the dollar change, I believe is 28,700 from the last meeting. Thank That's you. the only change to the budget. And, and so we can get into a, that, that number and all the numbers at the public hearing, but the legal counsel said you really want to have the full number going into the prior to the meeting and he suggested that we do this format of having a quick meeting prior with the larger number forward and then discuss it all at the public hearings so the public can right. digest what we're talking about and this is procedurally important because whatever number we present at our public hearing at 6 p.m can never go up so we're presenting our highest number and we can always take it back down it can go up but you have to repost we have, to have, another, public have hearing. another public hearing right? which is important <laughs> thank you for when you have more time than you know, if you had more time, a lot more time, you could, That's you could do something point. like that. But it's also when we post, it costs a few hundred dollars to post in the paper and so on. And so, forth. so you don't. Hundreds of dollars to post in the paper. I post them all at once to save the district money. <laughs> do, you, do you have an actual dollar amount for the adjusted bottom line, adjusted total? Yeah, it's on the last page of the second to last page of that white package. I can rattle it off, but it might be easier for you to write you can it. Rattle it off. Okay. Uh, three million five hundred twenty-three thousand three hundred three dollars. Great. Would you like a motion? I'm looking for a motion. Um, I move that uh, we adjust the uh, proposed FY25 budget uh, by. Sorry. We adjust the FY25 budget to account for the increased uh, cost of school transportation, uh, with the new bottom line being a 5.05% increase and a total of $3,523,303. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? And uh, it's forum is just the three of us in the room right now. All in favor? Yes. All right. Three zero, and then we can adjourn until six p.m. Yep. And Vicky and Lisa, I'll throw the other meeting in the chat if you want to use that to go over to it. So they, we have a separate uh, remote hookup for yeah the regular meeting. Yep. Okay. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Uh, calling to order the regular school committee meeting, Sunderland School Committee, on March 12th, 2024, at 6.02 p.m. And we will immediately open the public hearing about the proposed school year 25 budget. Okay. I'm going to take it from here. Uh, so we're going to talk, start by talking a little bit about the budget process and then get into what the numbers look like. If there are questions along the way, um, I think we're all open to open dialogue. So mm -hmm. if anyone public or here at the school has questions, help me um, and let me know what questions sure. you have. Um, so the budget development process, you can see here at the timeline on the bottom, the administration starts uh, developing the first draft in the fall. Uh, and then we work through January and February school committee meetings where we have discussions to deliberate what's been presented. Here we are at the March public hearing, and then we have a vote later this month to adopt at a second school committee meeting or uh, to make further changes if needed. And then the annual town meeting where the budget will be presented to the town for full vote is on April 26th. Uh, and we work to develop a needs-based and student-centered budget that is fiscally responsible, but also we take a hybrid approach so that we look at level services, supplemental funds, and new needs and initiatives. A couple things to note about that. Level services does not translate to 
Now, there is always an increased cost with level services, if for nothing else than the wage increase that we're obligated to cover for IAs and teachers in the union contract and then other non-union staff as well. Uh, and then we also look at um, non-wage expenditures and make adjustments primarily based on inflation right now uh, or other known factors if we have additional special education increases, transportation, et cetera. Uh, and then the last piece of the puzzle is looking at new needs and initiatives. And this is a particularly challenging part of the process, particularly for a school with a very small budget and a school with limited supplemental funds, uh, because there is not a lot of wiggle room to add new needs and initiatives. We've been fortunate the last couple of years to add some positions and the town has supported us in that. Um, and we are gonna talk about a couple of new things this year as well. Um, timeline to go through. Let's jump into level services. Uh, each of those are outlined here. Uh, I did mention that there are adjustments for supplemental funds in the first step of the process. So in regards to Sunderland, that pertains to the last two line items on here. So the ESSER grant is a grant that we've used in fiscal year 24 to help reduce the budget. We are no longer going to have those funds next year in 25. So those expenditures are still needed and get added to the level service budget at step one. Uh, and then we also look at our revolving funds. We are seeing school choice revenue coming down. So we need to make an active effort to decrease our expenditures. So there is a $50,000 adjustment for that here as well. Um, employee separation costs are uh, payments that we're obligated to make to either teachers or IAs in the union uh, based on their retirement and sick buyback. There is a $55,000 estimate to be paid next year from Sunderland Elementary, so that's included here as well. Wage increases and non-wage increases are also included. I want to let everyone know that the wage increases do capture savings for retirements or attrition, and that is reflected here in this number of level service at 7.19%. Uh, we have, um, I believe there were two changes in staffing that are implementing or impacting the bottom line. We have about a $60,000 savings here, which is 2% of the budget. So uh, we always try to capture those. If they weren't here, we'd be looking at over 9% at level services. Uh, then we do have a 2% COLA, and then on average, the step increases about 3%. So union employees will see a total change of 5% roughly, unless someone is on the top step where they're only seeing COLA next year. And then we have wage adjustments as well for individual contracts and uh, non-union employees that are school-based. So cafeteria staff, principal's office, uh, secretaries, custodial, um, anyone who works here in the building. Um, what else? We do have staff uh, moving columns as well, um, or moving to step 14 in the budget or in the um, salary schedule. So that's a changing that step increase as well. Uh, and then non wage increase, uh, we're going to get into a little bit more in detail so that we can talk about the transportation contract here while we're on this topic. Um, minor adjustments were made to utilities, which includes trash removal and then the telephone. And then we have a software line, which is related to the accounting software and the central office budget. So those changes total $6,000. Uh, the transportation increase is pretty significant, one that we were not prepared for at the last meeting. I had made an adjustment of $5,000 in the previous budget for the transportation increase because our contract was out to bid. That bid came back significantly higher. Sunderland is seeing an 80% increase, not the 10-ish percent that I accounted for, um, which felt comfortable to us at a 10% increase um, for inflation and, and other adjustments. 80% um, is certainly having a significant impact on this number. Uh, we met at 545 tonight to move forward with this budget, including those transportation changes. This percentage point was significantly lower uh, we added 28,700, which is just shy of a percentage point of an increase there. Um, do you want to get into further stuff about transportation while we're here? Yeah, we can bring it back around, I think. Okay. If you, if you... All right. Uh, so that's the level service. We're looking at 7.19% or $241,248 over the prior year. New requests are very minimal. And while we're listing these as new requests, they're really needs of the building. 
um, or to meet the needs of our students and families. So field trips related to equity and access, we are making an increase district-wide on all of the elementary school budgets to provide additional funding, primarily for nature's classroom so that we have proper transportation and can provide additional su support to families that need it. Uh, curriculum consumables is related to the new curriculum that we're rolling out. We've had Laura Ramsey, our curriculum director, um, come present a couple times about the new ELA and math curriculum. This is an adjustment to account for workbooks, um, what other things are they, you know, physical we'll items that they need them, any kind of consumable. Uh, general supplies and building repairs, and then the medical supplies and materials uh, coincide with inflation. The cost of any type of supply or material right now is significantly higher than it's been in prior years. And to have someone come in and work on the building, uh, contractor costs are also much higher than we're used to seeing. And we all know, uh, anyone who's been at a school committee meeting before, um, this building does have a lot of deferred maintenance that we need to pay attention to. We haven't had significant increases in this line item. So the goal is to uh, support um, facilities so that we can properly take care of our building. Oh, and you know what? I think I updated the slide so that it has the total on here. And I didn't put that one up. Let me just get that so that I have the total number. I have it here. I do. Um, so level services plus new initiatives, we are looking at 7.69% with the two. <laughs> um, so what does that mean for fiscal year 25? Uh, we know that 7.69 is a very significant increase. Um, we would have a intention of reducing that as much as we can moving forward to annual town meeting. Um, we did have several discussions about uh, consolidation of a classroom and actually reducing the budget by about $60,000, which would require the elimination of uh, likely a teaching position, um, which could be warranted by enrollment. Um, however, school committee was not ready to make that decision at either of the last two meetings, but we did talk about the possibility of using additional supplemental funds to bring the budget down. So this is in essence not a reduction in our budget, it's just a reduction of the overall increase by using additional funding. So we are going to use FY24 rural aid, which you can see there is 33,500. And then school committee would like to request of the town on a separate warrant the $55,000 for employee um, sick buyback separation costs, which they have supported in prior years. So level services plus the minimal new requests minus those two supplemental funds puts our budget today for public hearing at 5.05%. And then you can see there we have grants and revolving funds that we will use as well to fund the total operating budget of uh, $4.1 million. I'm not going to go through these slides in very great detail because we have talked about these in the past and anyone who did get them electronically has them uh, to read over, but I just gave you a list here of the primary operating expenditure function codes as set by DESE. And uh, quick facts on that, how expenses are distributed over the budget. So about 77% are related to instruction or teaching and learning. 81% of the total budget is wages, of which 2.5 million are paid to staff who work directly with students. Other expenses total about 650,000, and all of the uh, expenses included are school-based costs, as well as central office shared expenditures. Just some quick graphs for you to see here visually what that looks like. So the green is anyone, any expense related to instruction. So uh, wages for teachers, IAs, uh, principal's office, um, material, supplies, anything that's relating to related to educating our students. And health insurance is covered by the town, so this actually doesn't show the full cost of operating the school. Correct. Yep. Our uh, benefits and fixed charges line in the blue in the, of this pie chart is very small here, and that is because the town covers health insurance and other benefits for our employees. Salaries and wages, similar theme. You can see the majority goes to those uh, providing educational services to our students. And then other expenses, it starts to even out a little bit more. Pupil services is where the transportation costs come into play. Uh, operations and maintenance is the yellowish color. Uh, and then instruction is angry. 
historical information on the budget, you can see there we have had some higher increases over the last six years. Uh, we have had a, one year where we under 3% there, and, and in 2021, it was level funded in entirety. So we used other funding sources and savings to do a 0% increase in that particular year. And class sizes. So to talk about enrollment a little bit, uh, this is based on 14 classes uh, with 14 grade level teachers. Uh, we did discuss the consolidation of uh, one of the grade levels. This is projected for next year. So this year's um, current second grade that will be third graders next year, you can see are just 21 total students based on what these projections are. Um, very small classes. So we did talk about uh, Ben consolidating that class or another class if it felt more appropriate based on the composition and needs in that classroom. Um, we haven't moved forward with, with that change, but I did want to bring this back up because if we are going to need to reduce from 5.05%, this is really our only opportunity to do so is to actually cut from the budget from salaries and wages. Um, this number here at 166 students for next year is down from 184. That could fluctuate if the pre-K class ends up being a bit higher. Um, I don't think that you have any projections for the other classes to be much more significantly changed, even with a couple of school choice applications. So um, I actually think when we do the school choice report, it's two students more projected based on your school choice applications. I think the total would be um, 168, but still not enough to make a significant difference for us. Uh, historical data is here for you. You can see the last few years uh, we have seen a bit of a decline. And then the last slide I have before we take questions or go back to the transportation discussion is just a recap of where we're at. So we would be looking at a 5.05% increase over FY24 as it stands right now for a total general fund of $3,523,303. I am happy to take questions and or talk more about the transportation piece. Thank you, Shelley. I'd, I'd like to just say very specifically, we expect to have conversation right now with the Select Board and Finance Committee members, but every member of the public is welcome to make comments and ask questions. Um, so why don't we start with the transportation and see sure. if that opens up some additional questions. So I guess the yeah, you know, everybody is shocked about the transportation contract. So general background, we do um, bid the transportation contract every five years. Um, we put out a five-year bid. Um, we had put out the bid in December um, and had the closing date on um, the Wednesday before last uh, where the poor bids were being due. We did get one bid. Um, that has been the, we've, in the last three Bid cycles, we've only received one bid. There was one prior to that, I believe, where we had two bids. Um, that was not just the, the competitive bid to quick public transportation wasn't even, wasn't even close that time. Um, things to note about the bid is that it does come in at, um, where's per day? Um, it's 465. 465 per day, which is still lower than our neighboring districts um of the north the north i call the north <laughs> like it's like a game of thrones the people of the north um they do a consolidated bid with comescus um and they are paying about um it was a five five ten yeah so close to almost you know between around fifty dollars more per day per bus um and so is further down the Mahara district it's also franklin county so this is still the cheapest bus per uh, price per bus in Franklin County. Um, and I did have a conversation with Gribco to talk about why the increase and it's the price of doing business. They're, I mean, um, it's harder and harder to get drivers. They have to pay inflation to buy new buses. Um, and it goes across, you know, across the board that this is a market adjustment. Their last bid did come in, I would say below what would be market value. We were saving a lot of money overall compared to um neighboring districts if you're going to call that the market it is also fair to say that um, while it is a market value um there's not a lot of competition in the market 
So there's not a lot of um, bus companies to drive other bus companies to be more competitive in their bids. So they are competitive. This bid is competitive with others who have settled before us. Um, you know, the our own ten uh, percent where we had put in as a holder um, right now looks kind of silly that it was that low, but we saw a neighboring district um, settle this um, December at eleven percent increase, and so we thought around ten percent would have been even if it was a little bit higher, we wouldn't have been too shocked. But um, all at once, it's it's quite a bit. Um, also, the last bid um, had Frontier Regional paying more. This bid they decided to spread out evenly the bus price per bus to the towns and to Frontier at the same. Um, and so there was talk, of, we've had a couple of meetings now, so there was talk about, you know, why they decided to do that. It's up to, it's their prerogative when you we set up the bidding parameters um, and they can bid it how they want. Um, there was talk whether or not that can be changed. Um, I did talk with legal counsel and it's going to, they're going to have to look at it a little bit more deeply because when you set the grid parameters, you can't go and change them afterwards because another company could have bid on this had the parameters been to what their liking was. So the bid laws are very specific. It's to, it's to protect us. And at the same time, as you can see, when you only have one bid um, from a company and it, you know, for those who don't understand the bus business, it's hard to have another company in Western Mass have 11 buses with drivers to pick up a new bid. Um, you know, because that would be a lot of um, capital sitting for that company if they didn't get a bid. So um, anyway, in talking with um, other superintendents, this is the trend across the state. Transportation is hitting buses, hitting buses. It is it's hitting schools across the state for increases. And as we saw going through, um, I guess we always talk about COVID, but COVID being the marker that we couldn't find drivers. Um, there were some districts that couldn't even um, get enough drivers to run their schools that you know sent the market up um, to increase um, drivers and then obviously the price of the price of cars is going up but the price of cars is going up the price of buses are going up um, and fuel and, and fuel is going up so so um, that's kind of where we are with the the reasons that I have as to why and um, the bid is still has not been awarded. And it will be awarded at the joint meeting where the school committees have to come together to decide if they want to uh, award that bid. That's great. Thanks. Just a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. I can't remember, I looked at it, but I can't remember for the out years, years two, three, four, five, were there the increases back to what you would think of as a normal increase? Cost of increase. So it's 5%. Um, the difference is that we did remove the fuel clause. I, I which, wonder, I would wonder, do you still have fuel adjustments? So we did remove the fuel adjustment clause, which was part of the previous, as far as we can, as far as we know, the last uh, two or three contracts, it could have been forever, um, which would, we would win some years and lose some years. So some years we'd pay a few thousand dollars higher, or some years we'd pay, you know, save a few thousand dollars, depending on the price of fuel. So um, this is a more stable model. Um, it also allows us to better budget because even with the COLA, it was COLA and a fuel adjustment previously, the COLA was based on CPI. Mm -hmm. So it looked at a two year span. And if the index was high, we paid way more. If it was low, then there was really no change in the contract. They weren't, we weren't gonna reduce the contract based on CPI. They just wouldn't see any growth. So it allow us to budget more consistently and for them to know, you know, for their own budgeting purposes, what their um, expenses are going to be. I think 5% is a reasonable amount. You know, most of our expenses, not so much here at the elementary school, because there's not a lot of change in things like, I'm thinking frontier insurance, you know, liability, workers comp health, those always go up three to 5% a year. You know, um, we don't have as many of those issues here, but I think five in the transportation is reasonable. So years two through five, will have a 5% COLA adjustment. And, and is there any option for additional negotiation on this? And I was thinking in particular, if, I mean, this is a five-year contract, if there would be any play in just the first year number from the point of view of like, this is, you know, obviously put us in a bind and, you know, I mean, I don't know, it may not even be legal to go back and say, hey, can you? So you can go back and this is the part we have to be, um, 
careful with when, when we obviously would deal with, with council, but you can go back and look at you can look at the actual number, but you can't change any of the conditions of the contract. Right. So if you say, hey, will you reduce by fifty dollars a day and help us out? They could technically lower that that price, but um, yeah, they could. I mean, you have to kind of give them a reason why. <laughs> um, well, well, you know, they, kind of they are. <clears throat> They've been providing bus service to the district for a long time. They're members of the community. They are respected members of the community. They are also members, you know, having talked to uh, uh, Mr. Gribko, the elder, um, he cares very much about, uh, you know, the, the towns here. And, you know, maybe I don't want, you know, obviously this, the recent pass has put him in a financial bind because of the difficulties of of uh, operating under a contract that was written before all this stuff happened. But um, you know, I don't know. I mean, he's a. Um, I know. I haven't talked to him. He cares a lot about the towns. He's proud of the schools. Um, I think that um, you know he may be in a situation where he could do something. He may be in a situation where he couldn't. And and you know, I would just think a discussion might be useful, even if it was nothing came of it. It was just, you know, it's worth having a discussion. Don't know. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm, you know, I think just tossing that out as a possibility. I'm not saying, oh, go, you have to go do mm -hmm. it. I'm just saying, think about okay. that. So that's all. Um, if I can mention one other thing really quick that we didn't talk about as part of this, but we did talk about uh, in February is the potential for an additional out of district placement, which I do not have any additional information on other than that I know there are meetings happening behind the scene. Um, and I believe that the family is still requesting an out of district placement, but nothing has been decided yet. And that could significantly impact. That process will take longer than budget season. Yeah. So we may be in more of a crisis after the budget is approved to try to fund that out of district placement without having money available. But at this point, we have no idea. There's no certainty it will happen, and 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 there's no there's a wide range of possible costs. The prices of different happen. programs are it's a wide range, right? But it's not that that is hanging out there. Yeah. Is there any thing that we should be doing now that would be prudent? So right now we are holding a around forty eight thousand um, dollars of a of a current placement um, for that from the special ed education um, fund. No, it's from school choice funds, but is there is a placeholder in there. A placeholder that because we had the student out of district in the current year that's no longer out of district. So that is saving us some funds this year. Yeah, school choice. That's cool. There's a student in FY24 who started the year as an out of district placement right. and has since been moved out of that program. Mm -hmm. So those funds going into next year would be available, assuming that that student doesn't go back out themselves. Right. And then we have the new potential impact on top of that. Correct. There is a possibility you could have two students going yes. on. But there's no inklings that are happening of itself. Okay. Some of them move to town tomorrow, too. So you, you always have. Well, that's you. always good. <clears throat> but right now, I mean, there's nothing as far as the current budget that we're asking for that there's any. That it's reasonable to be adjusting it at all for this because it's so much of an unknown. Is that correct? Are you saying freeze the current budget? No, I'm just saying that you know we're, we're here to have a hearing on the on the budget and to decide whether it's both prudent and whether it's something that you know is important. Mm -hmm. Raise standard questions, and we have a you know possible. Uh, or district costs that are not trivial tend to be not trivial and so on. But it is so much unknown about that that it's not like, I mean, I think clearly what you've done in terms of, you know, with the school choice up to this point is appropriate and correct and 
well, I'm glad to hear, but you know, going down the road, I'm just sort of partly saying for other people in town that, um, you know, who knows at what point we're going to say, whoops, we got some bad news, and then we're going to be, you know, if we have specific bad news, obviously we're going to be sharing it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, we tried um, certainly in recent times to to have uh, a sense of that we we work on uh, a variety of issues together with the town to help come to the best solutions possible. And so um, just so that the town is aware that this is out there. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess the question is, let's play hypothetically, what happens if you get that type of bill in December of next year? So one, um, depending, it, it'll all depend on how much, right? So, um, you know, we would immediately look at what we have for our own reserves. We'd have a school committee meeting about it. Um, we'd look at our own, what we have for reserves. We would look at, you know, at that point, maybe well, aid will be up. You know, we'll look at those different kind of, those different kind of funds that could help offset. Um, we'd communicate with the town about what our needs are there. Um, if the town was strapped and going to do it, then we'd have to look at mid-year reductions. And that could be from just freezing budgets to, um, you know, you know, either personnel or other activities or those kind of things. And if there's, you know, if we added, you know, we could freeze, save a thousand here, save a thousand here, save a thousand there, add all those up and then see where we're at to see what we'd have to do there. But um, that's what you have to do in a mid-year thing. And it's, it's very hard to project ahead, but people want to know what the process is, is it all depends on, are we looking at, you know, twenty thousand dollars more. We're looking at fifty thousand dollars more. It's a very different conversation. One, um, you know, through uh, freezing of budgets and moving things around. Another one, you'd have to do. We'd either ask for outside help or um, reduce from within. Is that a hand up? Crystal yeah. raising her hand. Yeah, um, the potential um, out of district is that by any chance in that class that's real small. To start with, I don't know that we want to share that student information in a public meeting. Well, it helps us make a decision whether or not, you know, and again, you know, if we're going to ask you to, um, you know, cut a teacher or, you know, cut the number of classes. I guess that's yeah, kind I, of why we're asking. I think that I think it's a it's a fair question, but I can you can see how we would be uncomfortable in a class. Yeah, no, I un I understand. But I think it I think what I'm hearing you saying is we should be considering that as part of the if if that is within those numbers. Yeah. Absolutely. Jeff has his number. Jeff. You there, Mr. Kravitz? Sorry, I didn't hit unmute. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. You bet. All right. Uh, would it be helpful if I did uh, an overview of the town budget now or at some point during the meeting? Whenever you guys w would like that, I'm happy to. I would appreciate it. Sure. So right now we are looking at um expenses exceeding revenues by about four hundred and forty six thousand dollars um the biggest driver of that is an eight percent increase in health insurance um we are looking at ways to reduce that um but that you know um some of the other asks that were made beyond level services, we're, we're going to be having discussions about ratcheting that back to level services. Um, but there were really no like big budget increases other than health insurance. Um, so no, no obvious places to cut, but I am happy to share the budget and and you all can tell me if you find some place to cut, but that's where, uh, sorry, I should say this also doesn't include um, 
you, any use of free cash to balance the budget. Um, typically, we include, you know, we use between 100, you know, 125 to 175 um, in free cash, which we haven't calculated yet. Um, so it's not quite that bad, but we still are hundreds of thousands of dollars that we need to, to close. So. That's really helpful context. Thanks, Jeff. Um, yep. Just because I'm curious, uh, right now in the health insurance figure you're using, are you factoring in another two and a half percent increase in the town's contribution as the employee insurance advisory committee recommended last year? No. Okay. Yeah, it's eight percent without that. But the figure you're using, okay. Yeah, is eight percent. And Jeff, just to clarify, does that number that we're talking about include anything in terms of elementary budget or is that pre-elementary budget? Uh, I believe that it includes the elementary budget and the increased uh, transportation costs as well. So we don't have to add more <laughs> onto that. Other questions or comments from the public? The floor is open. I can see that we have 20 members of the public here, and I know many of them are school staff, and we appreciate your involvement in this process. And if you are here to make a statement with your presence, we don't actually know what it is unless somebody tells us. <laughs> yeah. My understanding is that the process here is that uh, we have this public hearing and then we have following on this our regular meeting that will mm -hmm. uh, cover a number of subjects but included on that is possible more discussion about the fy25 budget and then we have our next meeting uh scheduled on the it's in nine days it's next thursday next thursday or oh, well that's when we vote the budget 28 28 it's oh, okay not, it's not for a couple of weeks sorry okay thank you yeah and so and that would be when we would vote the actual budget the that, final the final budget well. that, that uh so that there's um not saying that things will change but there is certainly time for more discussion about this and um right within process as we get feedback from the public on the budget right then we go back to our own meeting to discuss what we want to do with the budget right um and, you know and obviously different public hearings you know for a two percent increase there's not much to happen just you know, it would be such you know, we'd all be hey we got a great budget this one obviously requires more attention um and we came in at a high number to have that discussion of all the different parts so that everybody knew what is it say? Because <clears throat> it is on the agenda to talk further is what I guess right. what I'm trying to say, but it would be our meeting at that point. Right. You can invite, you know, if people if a select board sat along, they can certainly be recognized by a chair to talk. Nathaniel. Um, just a quick question on the 16,600 that you put in as new growth. Um, from the sounds of it, it's largely stuff that you would want to do anyways that's just more expensive is that is that a fair a fair assessment um that's that is right um those line items the general supplies the building repairs and the medical supplies and materials have been over budget from some time and or costs are higher the the field trips and the curriculum consumables those are really new ads so that we can properly fund those lines. We haven't gone over those for those expenses yet, um, but the other three are really just budget adjustments to, to have enough money to pay for the school's needs. And in, in a less tight year, those the last three would probably have been part of the overall budget. 
as just increases to the line items as opposed to being counted sort of as new items. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, would it be fair to say that you guys put the, put this list together as a, if we had to start cutting stuff, this would be <laughs> sort of the first place to start as, as a, you know, kind of a... Yep, you hit the nail on the head there. A half a percent is a half a percent. And if we, yeah. we really have to reduce, this would be bringing all of these line items back down to where they currently are in FY24. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Sure. There are no further comments or questions. We'll take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. A second. All in favor? Three zero. Thank you. The uh, public hearing is now closed. We will proceed with our regular school committee meeting. Uh, next item on the agenda. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Thank you, everybody, for attending and participating. Uh, first item on the agenda is to and approve the minutes of February 7th. I'll make a motion to approve. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Three zero. Minutes are approved. Financial statements and warrants. All right. I do not have a financial statement for you, but I do have warrant totals. Mm -hmm. uh, warrant signed since the last meeting were 25, totaling $140,415.12. I can email you that number. to $140,415.12. Yep. Perfect. And I, I don't have anything on FY24. It, we've been so consumed with 25 that... <laughs> We'll wait till next month. <laughs> we trust you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Principal's report. Great. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so as highlighted in a previous report, our school council is taking on a caregiver feedback project uh, in the form of listening sessions. And the purpose is to um, solicit feedback uh, from our caregivers on and uh, just hear them out on ways we can continue to build upon all the wonderful things we're doing here at the school. Those listening listening sessions have started um, in a couple different formats, one live in person and two, we also sent out a survey. And so we received some wonderful feedback up to this point. And over the next few weeks, we're having a couple more sessions as well. MCAS testing starts up in April with uh, grade three kicking it off on april 1st um, this is a big part of the school year in terms of uh, time consumption and staff resources and so you know there's a, a good handful of days in both april and may for grades three through six um, that are dedicated to mcas testing um, important dates upcoming we have a pto meeting tomorrow after school throughout the school year each grade level has hosted a, um, or has helped to lead a monthly community meeting. Um, we started these up again this year as a way to build community um, throughout the entire school. Each month, a different grade level has hosted it. And on March 19th, grade one is hosting that particular meeting. Uh, March 21st and 22nd, uh, caregiver teacher conferences. We have noon dismissal on those days. We have an assembly coming up on April 9th. The Tanglewood Marionettes return to SES and uh, they will be performing the Dragon King. Caregivers, families are more than welcome to attend. That's at 1.30. And then on April 11th, we have BandFest, um, which is led by our wonderful uh, band teacher, Megan Carr, and that's held at Frontier at seven o'clock. Um, we are not having a district-wide strings concert um, this year, and that's just due to the, the turnover and staff we had in that position. However, each building is going to host uh, their own spring concert um, for strings, band, and general music. And then on uh, Thursday, April 25th, we have a STEAM night celebration, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. This, uh, I talked about it last, um, at our last meeting, but it's really being led by Rachel Kidder, our library media <laughs> specialist, and a large handful of other staff who are helping out in various capacities. 
There will be free dinner provided to all attendees that evening. Um, uh, the food's coming from both our kitchen and Bueno Isano. So we're really excited about that. The students have been working on various projects across all grade levels that they'll have a chance to uh, display on that evening. And then we are also having vendors come in um, and with a focus on sustainability. So it's all very positive, lots of great things happening. And um, spring is definitely in the air. We just hit uh, day 120. So we are two thirds of the way done with this year. Time's flying. Thank you. I see a comment from Dr. Palmer. Hello, good morning. Oops, good evening, everyone. I'm so used to saying good morning to all of my peeps at Sunderland School. My name is Victoria Palmer, and I'm the psychologist at the Sunderland Elementary School who has the good fortune to work within this community. I'm also the co-president of the Union 38 Educators Association. I'm really proud of our wonderful faculty who work together diligently with so much passion and creativity within their various roles. And as you've heard tonight, Sunderland School is a pretty exciting place to work and to learn. Tonight, I want to extend my very sincere gratitude to the school committee for your incredibly hard work in supporting our school, for your creativity coupled with your temperance in how you lead us. I believe strongly that Sunderland School thrives because of your leadership, so thank you. I'm commenting tonight about the 24-25 school calendar. The school calendar was shared with leadership of the union and we surveyed our membership to ask about the 24-25 year with the two proposed versions. 60% of our membership voted in support of the two week mid-year December break. Now, some of the reasoning members discussed was how that two week proposal allows our students and our faculty to spend more time with their families, to get healthy, to stay healthy, and to come back to school refreshed and ready for learning. So as you consider the calendar for next year, I hope you will keep all of this in mind. Thank you. Can I ask some questions about that? You sure can. What was your participation rate in your survey? We actually had 60% of our membership who voted in favor of the two week mid-December or late December break. 60% of your total membership, not 60% of survey takers. Our participation rate uh, was actually slightly less, but it was 60% of those who did vote to, for the actual two week break. And did you break out those results by school building? We did not. Okay, because we're going to get to this. Uh, one of the concerns that that, I'll, I'll save it for later. I have an equity concern. Okay, <laughs> all right. But thank, thank you for your comments. Yes, thank you for listening. And thank you again for your work. Um, I do want to come back and ask some follow-up questions about the principal's report. But while we're on public comment, <laughs> Are there any other public comments for tonight? There's no members of the public in the room with us. It's everybody is online. Okay, thank you. Mr. B, I'm curious, what's the funding source for the Tanglewood Marionettes? PTO. Thank you, PTO. Yes. And um, I've had a chance to talk with Mrs. Kidder about the uh, Cooler Community STEAM Fair that's coming up. And she told me how she's been having, oh, I forget what the term was, she's been having students go around the school um, as detectives for ener possible energy savings. And that they're coming up with some items that they would like for the school to improve its energy efficiency, <laughs> um, some of which cost money. And so I, I did suggest that students would be welcome to come present to school committee about these concerns. I, I do need to share that I got dinged by the energy detectives. <laughs> Are you wasting office. energy? 
and um, the lights were on, and so was the computer monitor. So the, the first graders read me the riot act. But um, <laughs> I also want to add uh, for the Tanglewood marionettes, we are we're actually having them come twice. Um, mm -hmm. So once in April and another time in May. The um, the visit in May is being funded by Kate Lorenz's family. Um, they're very appreciative of all the work that we do here and, and the support that we've given their family. And so they made a donation to go towards the arts. And mm -hmm. so we're uh, reckoning that, that that day is gonna be dedicated to Kate. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments about the principal's report? Well, other than the fact that I'm always amazed by the things that, P that happen because the PTO makes the effort to, mm. you know, whether it's raising state funds or materials or just in whatever way they do it, a lot of things happen that are really cool for the school, thanks yeah. to the PTO. So. Thank you, PTO. All right, moving through the agenda, we're on to um, some policies. This is our second hearing, second reading on <laughs> updates to policies KCD, KHA, LBC, EHAA, EHB, GBEE, JICJ, KDC, KDCB, EFC, and EFD. Um, I will make a motion that we vote to approve the changes to said policies. And a second. We explained last month what they were. Any discussion? Yeah. Yeah. I got a question about one of them. Um, and um, it's the one about actually first on the list here about uh, public gifts to the school. And what 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 I noticed here, um, and the only thing that I question um is it seems to be that any gift regardless of what the donor has for wishes will the use of the funds will just strictly be decided by the school committee or the administration depending i'm not sure but it may be the i guess it's by the school by the school committee or whatever <laughs> and for example, I just heard about, I don't know the details, you mentioned the gift that, you know, a family had made and so on. And um, I think our, you know, policy in, in general here is, in, you know, something like that. I am assuming it was, you know, not a huge gift, but certainly every gift is, you know, huge to somebody's budget. Um, you know, we don't get involved in approving uh a specific use for each gift and yet this sort of says that that's our policy and so the only one i remember where we got involved was the significant gift that came from the gentleman that had been a student here many many years ago and that has been used we had a presentation about it, a discussion about it and you've been doing a great job putting it to use for all sorts of stuff at the school that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise and you know that's so that you know, th this might be a, you know, a, a statement that I would be happy with if it, you know, was for somehow we would define significant gifts or major gifts or something like that. But for something where, you know, like case you talked about, it just strikes me this is not reflecting what we're doing. Right. So I would say when you look at policy, um, it's to protect the district. So in this particular case, you know, if someone came forward and wants to do a donation or any or donation from whatever, whatever means, um, you know, we can try to honor that request. But ultimately, once we have the money, we don't have to honor the request. And I think where that gives you protection is if someone became a little ornery of about what they wanted. You know, we wanted a bench. I want it right here. I want it to be bright yellow. I want the names to be whatever here, and I want it to say Coca Cola on it. You know what I mean? And then we can say, no, 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 we accepted your donation. We're going to do a park bench, but we're going to control, you know. And so I don't think we ever want to have ill will to donations, but at the same time, we have to be able to have the final say and control from health, safety, and um, 
you know, community interest. And I think that's what this is kind of saying. It's like, we control the funds. You, you're not going to be able to dictate um, those kind of things within it. Um, I imagine if someone wanted to give us a million dollars, our attorneys would all be talking about what kind of controls you're going to have within that. But this is, you know, I think this is where that's looking because you do have sometimes corporations come in and they want to give us to and we've had we've set corporate gifts in some of those schools as well and you know we control that money when it comes in there's no strings attached to that kind of thing you know you know we'll try to put it to the science if there you know we've got some science industries that we try to put the science to that kind of stuff and honor the request but ultimately we make the final decision i say we the administration with the backing of the school committee um we do on smaller gifts do fall behind in getting school committee approval. It's probably something we can tighten up on. You know, if a family gives a five hundred dollar donation in memory of some of that kind of stuff, it's you know, it's one thing. I think we're a lot more careful if, you know, so and so corporation down the road wants to give a gift. We it's kind of more scrutiny based on um, you know, a, a memory gift versus a um something that may have political backing or, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, you think, I, I mean, I think, I think what we're actually doing, it's just right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think it's just right, um, and I think that you all have terrific common sense when it comes to this stuff. And I know that Ben, for example, got a lot of gifts when he did the early childhood uh, playground, uh, you know, whole redo of that, and you know, and that worked out great. And there were. Um, and so I just didn't want to end up with a policy that sort of got us stuck. You know, um, we didn't have, we didn't sit down, you know, we didn't have school committee devoting half a meeting to going through all the different things that he got gifts for with the playground and, you know, approving the use of them for specific so Because right. that's what we got the administration for. Okay. With the policy, I would say that protects the, is, again, what you want well, we got that. It protects the district. Because you're only going to bring us out if there's a problem, yeah. right? Someone yeah. says, you know, okay. I, I, and we say, you know what our policy says, blah blah blah. That if you're making a donation, it becomes we make the final. That's basically what it's saying: is we make the final call how it's going to be used. Right. Um, if someone at that point says that I'm withdrawing my thing, then you've made that conscious. You must be pretty darn set as to not having the yellow bench in front of the school. Right. Okay. No, that's that's fair. I just wanted to. I just wanted a, sw a small discussion about it. right, and, if, and as a matter of practice, and anytime we are receiving monetary gifts, those really are going directly towards student programming, right? Rather than you know building building maintenance, right? That new car isn't a gift for me. Yeah, same. Same, same car. car. Oh, all right. Sorry. <laughs> shinier. Okay. Just no, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to vote for this. Hold on. I just wanted to. That's a good question. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? So we have a motion to approve these updated policies. All in favor? Yes, three zero. Next is removing policy KCB. I move we remove policy KB, KCB. Uh, second. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion. All in favor? Three zero. Keep it up. We good. Yep. with the notes yep. on to FY25 budget again. All right, so this part of the discussion is to determine where we go from here. Uh, we do have the meeting on the 28th, uh, which is where we're slated to vote the budget to move forward to the town for annual town meeting. Um, considering all of the pieces, uh, we know more information about the town's finances um, and coming in at 5.05%. Uh, I can say as your CFO, I still am moving for us to make a reduction of $60,000 um, based on not only finances, but also where enrollment is. We essentially have an extra teacher based on what Ben feels the classes need next year, 14 versus um, we could move forward with 13 classes. And we have some additional information since the last meeting that has come up that we want to share with you that will likely, we think, impact the decision and potentially make it a little bit easier right now. Um, so we do have a staff member that is currently on a leave of absence, and it, uh, that staff member has requested to maintain their leave of absence for another school year, which they have the right to request in the contract uh, that has been approved. Um, and according to Ben's uh, decision making and the needs of the school, we won't have to backfill that slot with a long term sub. 
meaning we can move forward with 13 sections instead of the 14. So the decision to reduce staffing is a little bit easier because we're not talking about impacting someone's finances because this will be a fully unpaid leave of absence. Um, so we could drop that position in the current year, no negative impact to staff, restructure the classrooms. What it will mean for 26 is if that staff member returns, there will be someone bumped from their position at that point because the funds will no longer be available in the budget. Um, but we don't yes. know if someone's leaving, retiring, Correct. or whatever. There could be other there could be, there could be other kind yeah. of movement, but yeah. it is. Um, <clears throat> so just to give you some info on the numbers, what that does, uh, it's a drop of, if it were about 60000 it would reduce the budget by 1.78%, bringing our increase to 327 and as Nathaniel pointed out, we could also talk about that 16,600 if we wanted to cut back on the new requests, um, which would put us under 3% if we did a combination at 2.77% increase. Could you say all that again? Yep. So I'm writing it down, thank you. Yep. Um, so if we were to reduce the budget by 60,000 and actually eliminate a position, it would be a reduction of 1.78% mm -hmm. for 3.27 over FY24, an additional 16.6 off the budget, which would eliminate the new request for this year, which is a half a percent would bring us to 2.77 if we did both. If we cut the new requests and reduce, I'm just giving you all the options. I personally don't think we should drop the 16,600. Mm -hmm. I think we need those funds, particularly the ones related to nature's classroom consumables, mm -hmm and then the building. Yep. Um, but it's also my job to give you all of the information. So, And a 3.27% increase is pretty reasonable. Um, and then we are using supplemental funds. So we are gonna be in another tight spot next year, even with having to you know, move forward with one last staff member in 26, we're using rural aid. We don't know what the impact of that is going to be. Um, we're hoping that the town is gonna improve that additional warrant of 55,000, but if we have other retirements to pay out next year. So I'm just sort of saying all that with the idea that the work that we're doing is helping us now, and we're still gonna have some tough roads ahead in future budget years. I think we also have to make clear that the, this, the 2.77 um, also is not including the other $55,000 that we're assessing the towns. Not, I'm using frontier term, assessing time, but asking for a one-time payment mm -hmm. to keep the uh, the peak of retirement costs out of the mm -hmm. operating budget. So if we're looking at total number based on, you know, Jeff had talked about the being a four hundred thousand dollar revenue shortfall and change. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure that that's, that's the total number in people's minds going forward. Yeah, if they're at a four hundred thousand dollars shortfall, and if we're at five point oh five plus 55,000, the school alone is 200,000 of that deficit. Mm -hmm. So, but we've only reduced it by 100,000. We, we, right? Based on, based on the assumptions right now about what the school, the assumption right now is, what, you know, is a 5.05 .05 is in their budget, okay? The fifty-five thousand is not in at this point anybody's budget because it's the right, expectation it? is that it's going to be handled by a separate article. Okay, that's nothing is nothing is done until it's done, but that's been indications that people are wanting to are, are willing to continue what we've done with that the last several years. Okay, um, so at that point, you know, I'm looking at this and saying that um what i would suggest is that we um go ahead and approve the reduction of the sixty thousand, because as you say the case for that um becomes certainly more compelling now that we know that um there was a, you know my fear was an involuntary layoff um and you could say, well, that could still happen the following year. Well, lots of things could happen by the following year. And um, who knows? And, you know, but enough, there are enough possible things over, you know, 
move it down a year, or there are a number of possible ways that there could be a solution that everybody ends up being happy with. And so, to me, doing this is like, you know, it's the right thing to do, both for how you're running the school, okay, and also for how our budget is the part of the town. So, well, if I want to picture it now, as far as the 16600 my suggestion would be that we wait on that, okay? Um, we have one more meeting. We have to vote at our next meeting. We can still change the number at our next meeting. We actually can't change it tonight. We don't have a vote on the agenda. So, but you, you're just going to be directing. We can have a straw vote. Okay. Yeah, you're not actually voting. There's no final vote in the budget. You're having a discussion. Right. And then Shelly will prepare that for the next set of okay. Right. Um, but, but this will be, but this would be, for example, you know, communicated to town hall. Yeah. So that they know where we stand. And then at this point, it's like, yeah, certainly let's say that we're going to move forward with the 60,000 if that's presented to the committee. Um, and to me, I would wait on the 16.6 because, you know, yeah, we do need that, you know, and, and if we can manage if the town, if that can be managed within the town's overall budget, yeah, that would not be wasted money. Okay. That's stuff that, you know, matters. Okay, but if push came to shove, then you know there really was a townwide crunch. When all was said and done, then maybe that has to be given up. But we don't need to be committing to that yet. That, is that a fair statement? Okay. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure how you feel. Yeah, no, I I agree. I think um, I I don't want to take out the sixteen six now. I think that's way too yeah. premature. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you know. Kicking the can down the road by a year on the sixty thousand is, um, you know, it makes it more palatable knowing that it's not somebody's job this year and not involuntary. So I feel a little bit better about that. I still have hesitation for the next coming years. Um, you know, what if we have a surge? What you know? How do we make that back up? It's a lot harder to make up money than it is to, <laughs> you know, to, to pull it together once it's once it's off the budget. But, um, you know, my sense is that for right now, that seems to make the most sense. I think we're all aligned on our thinking on that right now. Yeah. Okay. So we go forward with that. You guys are happy with that? Yeah, I've got a few more questions first. Okay. Um, so if we do, if we do reduce this, we consolidate a classroom, a grade level to one classroom, um, and somebody does resign for next year, would it be posted as a one-year position so that somebody would be hired? If we if we did end up with an opening for next year, somebody would be hired with notice that it, it, it might not be a renewed position the next year? Oh, because they'd be bottom. They would, yeah. yes. They would be hired next year. Um, Just for transparency in hiring. We'd have to have that discussion with the association because the association could say that you're you're splitting, you're hiring somebody who should be put into a long-term role because that position is funded long-term at that moment in time. You always face the fear of reduction. It would have to be a discussion, but because you, they could say that you, if you by doing one year. Could they I be hired as the one hire the long term sub, term sub the long term sub for the person on leave? Oh, you could because the person's on leave. Yeah, I guess yeah. you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're having a spot. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could because it's the person on leave. You're right. Yeah. I was saying if the person wasn't on leave, the person you know, you were worried about the following year, I guess you wouldn't have the person problem. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking yeah. the opposite that you wouldn't, you, you don't want to do a one year. I don't need to explain what doesn't matter. Okay. Where I was going. <laughs> um, so Shelley, when, during your presentation, when you were showing us the um, expected enrollment by grade, you talked about the third grade being consolidated. Is that generally not my job? Mean? I was just yeah, looking yeah. at numbers. I defer to Ben. I, I, I haven't <laughs> had any discussions internally with the school based team yet, um, okay. just because this has not well, no, just what well, we haven't, um, the reduction wasn't. Uh, Voted, voted on yet, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we would look at all the grade levels to see what would make sense. All right. So, yeah. 
today we're still uncommitted on where the reduction right. and, and so okay. you know the numbers right so 21 rising third graders in two sections that is the lowest um but there might be more need in one grade level compared to another so it's, mm -hmm. there's many different factors that come into it mm -hmm. and if we are reducing by a classroom why are we not also cutting an ia salary out of the budget that's a great question i was going to ask that too <laughs> um so we have not talked about that internally and i think the stance has been in other districts that we've made changes such as this with a change in a teaching position there may still need to be some additional support okay. within the grade level or you know shifting other things mm -hmm. around um, we certainly we've done it both ways. We've we've kept it on. committee and, member trying to join. Uh, Thanks. We've done it both ways, where we've had a larger class size, so we kept the IA for transition, and then we've also had um, we've cut both. Okay, good answer. Thanks. I want to look at the number of IAs too, because do you have an IA for every class, not counting your one to ones? No. Yeah, so I think there's probably already some sharing of ideas yeah, happening amongst <laughs> grade levels. So, throw a poll, we would like to instruct to remove $60,000 of staffing for our next meeting where we vote. I'll note we've got two missing school committee members tonight. They might vocally have a different position. But. We do have quorum tonight. <laughs> and we still want to ask the town for the 55,000, right? That's yes. your mm -hmm. yes. yes. not included anywhere yes. yet. And yes. to your point, it's still another 2% of the school's budget that the town is covering. They're just That's covering correct. it but from another not, funding source. But it's a erratic number year here. Yeah. Year. And, and it's eligible it's, for ARPA it's funding. Been, it's been several years yeah. now that we've adopted this procedure to deal with it. Yeah. And People are happy with that. So, all right. Okay. So, is that is that sufficient guidance? Yep. I don't need anything else. Do you? Um. Yeah. I mean, I guess we'll be. It's just that the two together equals. Uh, right now, yeah. I request a three point. Forget the percentage. What's the dollar amount? Um, one hundred nine thousand three hundred forty-eight dollars plus fifty-five. Right, but the fifty-five, as Jessica said, they could use ARPA funds, which doesn't have a budget impact for them okay. overall. They could use free cash. You know, that could be where they apply free cash. It's not necessary. In the past, have to in the past, use free cash. Yeah, and they have um, there's an ample amount of free cash. Not enough to deal with the problem they've got, but you know, some would be used or either that or some ARPA money would be used for this. And to me, it's it's a responsible way to deal with it. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm good. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Good. Moving into new business, school choice. Great. So I have sent the school choice recommendations to the school committee on a couple different occasions now. Um, and that's been based on updated numbers. To date, we have received 20 school choice applications. Um, we have a boatload for rising kindergarten at 14. We've received two in first grade, we've received three in second grade, and we have received one in fifth grade. Um, our practice in the past has to been has been to accept school choice siblings, and of those fourteen applicants in kindergarten, uh, six share households. That would bring our projected total number of students in rising kindergarten to seventeen. Um, we have also received one school choice sibling for rising first graders, and that would bring the total number to 19. So the um, you'll, you'll notice for recommended openings that for kindergarten, um, the administration is recommending that we accept the siblings. 
And then at the other greater levels, you'll see one greater than or equal to. And that is due um, in the event that a current Sunderland resident moves out of town mid-year that they could still apply for school choice. Yeah. So the school committee, um, <clears throat> you know, Darius, help me out here, can vote um to accept school choice openings at individual grade levels right so right. You first you just do a vote of that you're going to be a school choice school and then you can make um you can put restrictions on certain classes if you wish or you can give um that responsibility to the principal Assuming i think in the past haven't we we voted to obviously we have to vote to become to continue to be a school choice school but I think beyond that, what we've done is you've explained the situation mm -hmm. and we have essentially left you the discretion to change it as time goes on because otherwise, because certainly things are going to keep changing and you don't want us to prove every single change, right? Right. And, and you know, I, I think it's, it's just an ongoing discussion internally with Shelly and Darius and then also members of the teaching team for the grade levels that could that have a lower number of students but two sections right. our practice has not been to um accept this additional school choice students in those grade levels in the event that down the road right we're talking about um possibly reducing a, a class or consolidating from two to one so i don't know if you want to I mean, I'll make the motion to that we continue with the in the school choice program. I'll second. And I don't know if you want an additional part of that motion to anything more specific about. No, let's let's go. Let's just let's vote on that. Okay. Discussion on that piece of it. We don't need to close this agenda item yet. Okay. Okay. All in favor of remaining at school choice school for next year. Yes, Peter, three uh, zero. Okay. Sorry, getting ahead of myself here. So, I, no, no, that's fine. We should do it in two parts anyway. Um, so, fourteen school choice applications for kindergarten. That's um, the highest it's been in years. Yeah. Um, so now I understand why we're talking about consolidating third grade. <laughs> well, sorry, because sorry. if we accepted. Well, well, all so of them, then we would have two full kindergarten classes instead we, of we two would, borderline or but, maybe one big one. But of those 14, it's not guaranteed that all will accept. And our practice has been to fill sections and not create a new section. And mm -hmm. that's where we get into trouble is, you know, by going over, <laughs> over that amount. And so you'll notice the recommended openings for uh, kindergarten is just six, which represents the sibling applications. And that brings us to a very reasonable, but very busy skill group of five and six year olds. Mm -hmm. I see no need for an additional motion. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't think I want to get involved. I mean, I I have thought from the beginning here of my of my you know, time on the school committee. I've always reminded myself it's the administration that runs the school. The school committee has a certain role to play and an important role to play, but you guys are the ones that that run the school, and I've been grateful for it ever, ever since. And, um, yeah. It's just that it has budget implications, which is our job. So. That's absolutely <laughs> correct. That's absolutely correct. I think I'm all set for tonight. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. All right. Thank you. Uh, Terrence, what do you want to tell us about school calendar? All right. So I've sent to you, we have an interesting year this year. Um, I have in, in front of you should be two drafts of the school calendar. Um, basically, they, are, um, they copy the format of days off that we had this year, with the exception of the um, New Year's and holiday break of December, um, there are two options that are kind of mirroring what we're seeing in other districts across the state. Um, 
and we'll have conversations among superintendents about what different school districts are doing, but the option of whether or not to come back on Thursday the 2nd or to go and come back on January 6th instead and give two full weeks off for that winter recess. Um, and as you heard from Vicki, they, they discussed it at the uh, 38 association level. Um, Frontier did not, association did not discuss it at that level. They kind of leaving that up to the school committee. The um, the also as just as a reminder, um, the, the contract says we come back if we're going to come back at before the last Wednesday in August. We have to get approval from the association, and we did. So we are able to come back um, on these calendars. As you can see, we're starting prior to the 28th. <laughs> so they give us approval on that. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be discussed at the joint meeting. I kind of said at the um, some of the other ones, it's kind of there are different views on this, and I know Jessica, you were talking about it, but I did share it with other committee members as well that um, there is the idea that it's a longer break, but some families may have difficulty with a longer break with the amount of time they have to take off, mm -hmm. um, and they may have to use you know more of their vacation time during the school year than. And they may walk. Um, and so it, it is a kind of that balanced decision. Um, really, it's, it's one of those community decisions. That's why it's in your lab um, instead of mine. Um, so, yeah, it's going to probably be a, a lively discussion, but it is, I hope everybody keeps in perspective, it is a, uh, whether or not it's a vacation timing of the calendar. And we are going to have, if, they, if you don't do the full two weeks, there will be families that will take the full weeks, two weeks, because they're going to be. You know, tying that to an external vacation, um, and there'll be those families who need to come back or, or not. So immediately you're going to have people playing with whatever the calendar you produce going forward. But you're trying to lower some of the weight of it. It's not the, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Anyway, so um, it's going to be discussed at the joint meeting, but I wanted you to be able to start talking to people about it and be able to survey the field. And when we vote at the joint meeting, is it the Union 38 reps are voting on it, not the full committees? So, so that we all vote on the same calendar rather than different committees approving different calendars. Correct. So the 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 uh, frontier in thirty eight has always been the same. Outside individual schools that may have had, I think, a roof project in Deerfield one extended that you weren't here then extended the change the starting of the school year because of a of a of that kind of stuff. But we are on the same bus contract. Um, they run the same route. So, you know, coming off of that, they really do need to be a collective decision. This does kind of go down to that rule, kind of thing we talked about, like, how do we make that decision? Um, and I probably will have to talk to the chairs prior to the um, joint meeting to make sure we're all on the same page, how that decision is going to be made. Because it's one of those things when we talked about, when we talked about the union superintendency agreement to, you know, how we're going to vote as different, the different units for the superintendent, we decided not to get into the whole the whole contract, um, which is, you know, how do you decide the calendar? So what happens if it's two and two or, you know, that kind of step, one committee versus another committee or one, you know, that, you know, weighted vote, all the other kind of thing we have, we should know prior to going in how we want to address that as it comes up and just agree. Um, I think on something that's not as heavy as closing schools or doing something like that it's been as simple as a, you know we should just have a we agree to do this before we vote and then go into discussion about that. i think that's how we probably should approach it and then <clears throat> but the five chairs can no longer discuss this over email because now we're a subcommittee that's subject to open meeting law but right. we could post a meeting and we could discussion. post a meeting for the five of us to discuss it or you could just you can discuss with the five of us serially correct i could also get a recommendation of how to do it and then, okay. um, recommend it and then people say okay we'll we'll vote to probably put on the joint meeting we'll do this we'll vote to how we're going to make the decision and then and then vote to make the decision okay. prior to discussion that and that way people are kind of clear like we all agree how, agree how the rule we made and then do it this is and then hopefully we can start tracking exactly mm -hmm. what's working as we have more joint decisions mm -hmm. um so yeah well that'll be fine <laughs> I did want to make some comments about the actual calendars. I've got a very strong opinion on this one, both as a parent and as an elementary school teacher myself. Um, 
that you know over vacation kids forget how to be in school younger children forget over the weekend how to be in school like monday morning in a preschool and the kindergarten is different than the rest of the week um and that school days in january are so much more educationally valuable than school days in june as an equity issue, I mean, Darius mentions the childcare is really hard for a lot of families. And I don't believe that Sunderland has a lot of families who are traveling for such vacations that they would miss school days, just in terms of Sunderland's demographics. We also do not have air conditioned classrooms while other schools across the district do. Those days in June are really tough for learning. It, it can, not saying it necessarily does, it could, start to feel like babysitting and not teaching because of the circumstances. Um, I also, you know, we are now in an era of increasingly erratic weather. If we had a full two week winter break and then we had a major ice storm or something that closed us down for a week, you know, which happened early in my teaching career, I was in a district that closed for five days after a nice storm. You know, we would really regret having taken those two extra days because then we'd be really late in June. And Sunderland doesn't have air conditioned classrooms when other buildings do. So that was why I was asking if the teachers had it broken down by building. Hmm. Um, you know, just continuing with the equity and access topic, you know, during um, the height of COVID when schools were remote, um, the schools did provide like to go pick up meals for, for families. And obviously this would have some sort of, um, you know, budget implication, um, but that might be something to look at what the total cost would be for, you know, grab and go lunches um just for some of our families if it's an extended period of time shelly's giving me the the uh the evil eye here but um i'm just looking yeah. at different options mm -hmm. um because it does impact some families differently um thanks i i will be vocal at our joint meeting on this topic <laughs> it really is a, it's a double read it's really so you don't get blinds over at that meeting and yeah I think that how I look at it is have conversations with people. You know, it's kind of your, see what your constituents say, have a feeling about it. And, yeah. 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 I would welcome public input. Our email addresses are on the website. <laughs> um, the second calendar you have is the school committee calendar. Um, again, um, you can have meetings anytime you like. You just can't have them when other people are having them. So that's probably create that kind of more complex calendar. Um, and there is the same as we did this year. We tried to rotate things around so you don't. Any staff meetings, you're not always the first or the second meeting, depending on what you don't like. Um, and then we have the individual meetings during budget season. Mm -hmm. And I'll just note, I guess this is just for me and Amanda, it moves our school committee meetings from primarily Tuesdays to primarily Thursdays next year. Okay. I think Tuesday in September, but then Thursday the yeah. rest of the year. Maybe one Wednesday. <clears throat> yeah. Question back to the calendar uh, mm -hmm. and your comment about uh, not being air conditioned. We have you know, moving through the process is so part of the capital budget is to, to phase one of putting in many splits, which phase one is nine units. Um, city that gets through the process and gets approved to town meeting the end of uh, April. Is that something that could be done this coming summer? That would be the game thing. Yeah. It would be <laughs> some of this. So that okay. would be would be some relief and it, and it does more than just those rooms it's I mean, like it, 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 the it, it, it does and, and the plan would be to you know start with the early childhood classrooms make sure mm -hmm. each of those spaces the kids nap during the day mm -hmm. right. um have heavy units in them and then looking at the rest of the building we would place the units where you could open an adjoining classroom door mm -hmm. so that some of that cold cooler air is transfer to the room next door so i just you know so obviously that means at some point this spring that somebody has to get going in terms of making that happen once we've got the funding 
you know, if we get the funding. We've, we've, yet, and we've done it so many times, we're pretty darn you, good at it. You're good at it. So, yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be I speak for sure. And what is the funding source for that? Uh, the capital budget. Okay. Yeah, capital budget's in good shape. Okay. I have a quick question regarding the calendar and budgeting. When the school is closed for winter break, what does that do to our utility bills? Do we turn the heat down for those two weeks? What does it save us? Like, is it minimal? Is it just not You're worth not anything? Say enough of the savings. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, and we can't turn the heat down too, too low. Much, we right? still have some staff here. We have a number of our 12 month office staff and custodians, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, I don't like to look at it this way because it's it's the wrong looking at Juneteenth, but it is a budget item that you have to understand that we would have, it would rotate that you would have less days as a barrier between Juneteenth and if you come to school on Juneteenth, it's around, I don't know what it is for Sunderland, I know Frontier is like a $5,000 charge. Because you're going to pay for that I day. I don't think it'll hit that high, but it'll be, it's a, few, only, it'll be a few thousand dollars. It's right? only IAs well, because so, so all of the other staff, 12 month staff, already get it. So um, it would just be the, I think there's 20 or 21 FTEs. Yeah, it's so it's not, 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 not going to break so, the bank. Yeah. Um, but yes, I know they, they were talking about that. They're going to bring it up. I don't want to avoid the holiday because of money, but the other side is. <laughs> so if you're looking at fuel costs, right, you're, right, you're right. looking at everything. <clears throat> anyway, fun. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Um, SOA plan. SOA plan. So as part, um, I remember last year. Um, so for when they passed the Student Opportunity Act, they did make an accountability that the schools would fill out. A plan is submitted to DESE of what they're doing with the SOA money. Now, um, when you compare us, you know, to the districts that are receiving millions, do we get any SOA money? No. Um, we get thirty dollars <laughs> per student. Yeah, we get like maybe five thousand dollars. So, are they calling the increase in Chapter Seventy SOA money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even yes. though it's just Chapter Seventy. SOA money. money is Chapter yeah. Seventy. Money. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And so I have to fill this form. I have to fill this form out about how we're going to spend all the money they're giving us. I could just write back. It's just COLA increases alone. Um, won't even be covered near covered on this. Um, but we play their game because um, they're actually kind of following up more and more. In their first year, I think I wrote it. We didn't receive much, and I didn't write much. Um, there was actually one superintendent wrote something kind of funny to them that I'll put as much effort in as you give me money. Um, <laughs> but um, really looking at like, what are we doing with the money? Um, or what we're saying we're doing with the money is that it's all the things that we're already doing. But um, if you look at the very last page, the very last thing is the, what we're doing to measure our success. And that's kind of the easiest way to read this. I think the easiest way to read the report instead of going through. And we talk about all of the chapter 70 money as the numbers in here. You're like, wow, we're getting a lot of money. No, it's just chapter 70 money. Um, but looking at the high quality instructional materials for our two new curriculums from the ELA and the math, um, monitoring the, the use of those materials um, and improved literacy screening and adoption of benchmark for comprehensive early literacy, literacy curriculum. Those are the first big things that are happening in elementary school. You know, then the next three are what Frontier is doing and just decrease absentee rate, which is a statewide push as well as they're making it part of our um, our uh, connection with our, I can't find the right word in my head, um, accountability, because they're making <coughs> attendance part of accountability. In fact, they're making it way even more than it was in years past. So um, they're shifting away from actually, you won't get me down my kind of thing, but how students are doing on tests or whether or not you can get students to school. Which, I don't know how, <laughs> the schools can do better things, but at the same time, I'm not sure. If you disagree with the measure of the test before, now you're really gonna start to disagree with the measure of the test. But anyway, so that's what the SO, you have to vote to approve this so that I can submit it um, with the date that you approved the SOA. Um, Motion we approve the SOA report as presented. 
a second. I do want to make the comment that part of this uh, talks about the listening session on attendance, which I attended as a parent. And the summary says that one of the things that came up was that, I forget how it's worded, but that kids learned from the pandemic that they don't have to go to school all the time. And I did not hear that emerge as a theme in the session. Mm -hmm. If anybody said that, it was really understated. All of the other themes were much, much more often said about mental health and anxiety and bullying and medical health issues and transportation issues and start time issues. I did not hear a single person say that it was because they learned they didn't have to go to school because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The parents who were there were really concerned about being misperceived. Okay. I, I wish that could be removed. <laughs> could, could we could I make a motion to amend to remove that line? Sure. Even though other committees you are already voted. Yes, please. They vote against this, but... Do you need me to find the line? So what do you uh, what is the uh sorry I have to find it in the packet. I'm gonna need a minute. Um, as well. Um, it would be cool. I like the idea, but we couldn't send it to us. Right. Okay. We got people leaving. Oh, <laughs> we're not doing our anymore. <laughs> All right. So in our packet, it is page 28. Uh, so the, the section Darius is headed open invitation focus group in bold and so under just, school experience, the phrase, uh, no, sorry. Yeah. Under school experience, it says lack of student engagement in school. Why bother to attend? I guess that doesn't specifically connect it to the pandemic. Okay. okay. If we could just, could I make a motion to you put it in quotes? I wonder if it's on. I have the, yeah, that's, uh, the that's the thing that's really I have the uh, I have the uh, charts for that in my office. Yeah. Up. yeah, I can pull out and look at it to see if something was just gonna either phrase wrong if it's an edit or if it's a removal. Yeah, it, it's that quotation why bother to attend that's really. All right, I guess I won't make a motion to amend, but if you could okay, I can check that, thank you. Sure. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, any other discussion? <laughs> All right, we've got a motion to approve the SOA plan. All in favor, three, zero. Thank you. Getting to the end. All right, committee and chair reports. I've got a few things to report on. Um, uh, one is that since our last meeting, um, a non-binary student in Oklahoma named Nex Benedict um, died after being assaulted at school. Um, there, there is a movement to um, codify uh, LGBTQ inclusion and affirmation and safety policies. Um, Massachusetts already has really good protections, um, so we don't actually need to change our practices, but when the chairs started discussing this, or was it all the chairs? Yeah, yeah. Um, we looked at some different model policies where we could vote it in just, just to codify it, to make it really official, to make sure that everybody knows that there is local strong support. Um, what we ended up deciding was that all of the model policies we looked at, none of them were quite right. Some of them used outdated language, so we're gonna send it through the policy procedures. It's going to take a while, um, but we did want any families who are concerned about this to know that in the meantime, the protections are already in, in place with our practices. It's things about bathrooms and pronouns and names and privacy issues, things like that. Um, 
Also wanted to report about the rural schools bill, which was reported out favorably by the education committee, the joint committee on education. However, they reported out an updated version that stripped out basically everything that wasn't related to regionalization. It does not include rural aid. It does not include the declining enrollment funds. It does not include regional transportation it's, or any transportation reimbursement guarantees. It doesn't even include the Special Education Financing Commission that literally every district in the state needs. Um, so it is no longer really appropriate to call it the Rural Schools Bill. Um, I was advised by a legislator recently that probably nothing is even going to happen with that updated version um, because the I, I think the original sponsors of it are withdrawing their support for the current version. It is, and, um, they have pivoted to trying to put together a rural schools package for FY25 for, for the budget that is in the works right now. Um, right now, the governor's budget has uh, recommended $15 million again for rural aid, which is what it was this year. And sort of the feeling is that that probably will not go down through the House and Senate budgets. So it's likely we'll get the same amount of rural aid. It could go up, um, but they are trying to put together a package with six items. And I don't remember what they are to try to bring more money specifically to rural schools for next year while we continue the long-term fight for funding rural schools in an equitable way. I think those are my updates. Any other committee reports? No, no, no I, just like I mentioned, the capital stuff is actually the side of the town budget. It's in um, good shape thanks to the capital override we passed uh, a year ago. And uh, so the, the items requested by the school so far seem to be um, not getting any, uh, not running in any problems. Thanks. We do not have a collaborative report tonight. We have a superintendent's report. No superintendent's report. All right. Do we need an executive session? Anybody here feel like we should have one? All right. In that case, we are on to adjournment. A motion to adjourn. Perfect. All right. All in favor? Three zero. Thank you, everybody.